Alrighty, welcome to the After Hours of T.C. Rustani, the podcast. I am T.C. Rustani, emanating from the Palatial Podcast penthouse. And all the way on the phone is my mentor, the one and the only, I haven't talked to him in a while, Mr. Ricky Bittman. What's going on, Ricky? Yoo-hoo, T.C. Up, up, and away, hey. Up, up, and away. I want to see if you remembered it. Up, up, and away, hey. Now, uh, we're on the phone right now. You were supposed to be in studio, but something happened. So where in this big, wild world of sports are you? Well, I'm hanging out on the East Coast. I'm East Coast, but I'm not too, too far from you. I'm looking out at the ocean right now through the window of my Winnie Bagel. But I did, uh, you know, I came in contact with some questionable people in the last uh, 72 hours, so, uh, you know, I don't want to put anybody at risk. Let's just leave it at that. All right. Well, you know, I am not going to question the authority of Mr. Ricky Bittman, my mentor and lifelong friend. And uh, you got a lot of things uh, going on in the fire there, uh, Mr. Bittman. Well, this thing, you know, is the, is the veil or the curtain starts to pull back a little. You know, I don't want to be too optimistic because people like to rain on everyone's parade. But, you know, things are starting to look a little better. I said, you know, maybe I'm going to get a jump on things and, and you know, dust off a few projects because, uh, you know, I've seen you've already uh, tickled the uh, the uh, social media with the idea of uh, the Kung Fu Theater is slowly rising from the ashes like the Phoenix. I saw that. I, I did indeed post that on my uh, Twitter page, which you can follow me at After Hours TC. After a long, long battle behind the scenes, we have secured the broadcast rights on our YouTube channel for Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater, that one-time episode that premiered in 2009 that was such a cult classic, there was a lot of red tape behind the scenes and why we couldn't get our hands on it. And that's why you're here on the program to give us the 411 and why it took almost 12 years for yours truly and Rastani Productions to get their hands on Kung well, Fu there was, Theater. There was red tape and a redhead. Now, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. My, what, um, I know you're talking about. Wives, TC, okay? And we go back to when this show first came out. And uh, let's just say I wasn't looking at the fine print on the contacts. And uh, when things kind of went south with the relationship and the marriage, went south with the name Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater. I couldn't even say it. Okay, this is I'm, I'm talking about my ex 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 wife Biscuit. You remember Biscuit, right? Yeah, yeah. She's not the kind of one you get from KFC either. Not at all. Doesn't. Oh my goodness. I mean, this woman when she turned mean and stale, she turned mean and stale. So basically, because I wasn't the sharpest knife in the draw, when it, you know me, when it comes to signing contracts, I mean, my God, I'm I'm, I'm still under contract with Cubby Smackums probably t- till ten years after I'm in the ground for crying out loud. She just basically took all the rights to Kung Fu Theater, the the shows that I did have in the tank, and especially the premiere show, and just took it all away from me and held it hostage. You know what this reminds me of? Uh, another Ricky. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, the famous wrestler. His wife oh, yeah? took his name, the Dragon, for so long. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's 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 why I was thinking, you know, is it something to do with people named Ricky? I mean, I mean, I, I'm obviously I don't know because my name's TC, but uh, mm-hmm. that, it kind of echoed the dragon situation with his wife, and uh, well, I, you know, but she wasn't a redhead. But you know, you got to stay away from those fiery redheads, especially the ones well, named Biscuit. Yeah, exactly. Well, where were you? Thir- where were you thirteen years ago? I mean, come on. You well, know, you know, you know where I was thinking. thirteen years ago. I was hosting the award-winning After Hours at TC Rustani. I couldn't come to that w- uh, that wedding out. It wasn't even know, in Vegas. You- it was in Pahrump, Nevada. Harum, Nevada, right outside of Vegas, not too far outside of Vegas, where all the action is. Keep your eyes on the skies. Welcome to Parump, Nevada. Home of the late, great Art Bell. Oh, I just, I just took, if I had a hat on right now, I would take it off and put it over my hat. I miss Art Bell. I'd see him every now and then down at the general store. And yeah, what was he, what was he buying at the general store? Just for curiosity. Uh, he bought a lot of bags of flour. He said his wife could bake. And uh, he had a thing for apple cider vinegar. He swore it was the, kill, the cure-all to everything. Mm, well, he, he would know. He would know these things because he was the king of conspiracies out there. But uh, speaking of you, now you are in the Winnebago. You've been traveling around coast to coast and border to border and all points in between. What have you been doing? I haven't really spoken to you for almost a year. Well, you know, I've been kind of keeping my eyes on the skies because you know me when it comes to that. I'm, I'm a firm believer that we are not alone. And, uh, you know, I've been following this Mars Rover, and uh, I just really drive to where the skies are clear. I like the big sky country. Spent some time out west, you know, where, uh, you know, where the gimme land, lots of land, 
Tweedle, Tweedle, Tweedle D, you know, don't fence me and type of a thing. And uh, mainly, mainly been focusing on the skies and, uh, you know, lamenting the loss of my Kung Fu theater. But one of the things I've been really working on, and it just dropped, and I'm not even sure you even know about this, TC, but I have my own podcast now. I, I, I heard rumblings about this through the mm-hmm. grapevine. Of course, you, you, you know our ex- new executive producer down here, the lovely and talented Miss Abigail Howard. She has her, oh my she has her finger on the pulse of everything going on in the world of After Hours. I'm going to, absolute doll. You know, don't get me wrong. I like Sabrina, whatever her name was, uh, Kane, Kane Alana, whatever. You know her. I mean, you could never get the cube dice for me in the studio, but still, she was a darling. But, you know, you've really struck gold with abigail i have to say i mean the chemistry between you two people on these podcasts it, it, it's amazing well it's it's everything i learned from you with the ladies my friend oh please god almighty hopefully it doesn't go that way well no no, no. I, I every even people who work on the show i have them sign prenups <laughs> oh that's now you're talking my language this is the advice i could use but let's get but back the, to it here the big yep, podcast so, so this, this podcast it's called Ricky Bittman's jukebox, or as we call it in the industry, Abby's JB. I love it. I love it. Now, are you are you still as cool as the Fonz, and you can hit that jukebox, and a song will play? Well, I mean, nowadays you don't have to. The jukebox is it's up in the cloud. But I mean, if there was a jukebox in front of me, I'd take a swing at it. Hopefully, I wouldn't do any damage. But you know, what has the Fonz got on you or me in this day and age? Uh, Let's be honest. White hair. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, so what I did was I came up with the concept of if you were hanging out with me, if you were in the Winnebago, if you were shooting pool, like they used to have that billiards uh, up there. Now, oh, where you are, uh, there was a billiard uh, uh, hall up on that Route 1, that, that mile-long uh, Route 1 full of restaurants and uh, houses of ill repute. There was a billiard hall up there. I used to go in there and take some money from the local suckers, and there's billiard halls all over this country. Of course, they're closed now. But if you were hanging out shooting some pool, these are the songs I would have on my jukebox or the jukebox that was in the area at the time. So if I had my own jukebox in my own man cave, which I don't have because I drive the Winnebago, I would have a jukebox chock full of what I call the best songs in the world. Now, I'm looking through it right now. It's on Spotify for those of you out there who are technically savvy. Uh, mm-hmm. Ricky Bittman's uh, jukebox is on and Spotify. And I'm looking at a song here. Now, this, now this, I've never heard of this before. The late, the late great old Blue Eyes himself, the chairman of the board, Frank Sinatra, sang the Kermit the Frog, It Ain't Easy Being Green. Isn't that something? He brings a whole new level of appreciation to that song. It was from an album called Sinatra and Company from 1971. I don't have my notes in front of me, but I'm fairly positive. And uh, the song was written by Joe Raposo, who wrote music for uh, the, Muppet Show, the Muppet Show and Sesame Street. The first time it was performed, of course, was by Jim Henson as Kermit the Frog. And, uh, you know, old Blue Eyes heard this song. And it just struck a chord with them. Because if you think about it, a lot of people think this song is about, I'm afraid to be different. But what it's really about is people who are just sort of reluctant to take a step out of the shadows and let themselves shine. Something's holding them back. And it's a very sad song. And as we all know, a song in Sinatra's hands, I mean, it takes on a whole new meaning. Like the guy said, remember uh, Spinal Tap, Bruno Kirby, he was playing the limo driver. He said, when you've loved and lost the way that Frank has, you get to know what life is about. And oh, it should say that on his headstone because you listen to It's Not Easy Being Green and it's done by Sinatra. It'll just bring a tear to your eye. It will. And you can find that on Spotify on Ricky Bittman's Jukebox. Please look for it. Now, it's now soon to be coming available on Apple Podcasts. And it's also available right now on something called uh, Cast, Cast Pod and uh, Cast something. Uh, I got the notice just early this morning. I'll come up with the name of it, but it's available on Spotify and something else that has ties into Amazon, and it will soon be available on Apple Podcasts. Now, now I got a question for you there, Mr. Bittman. How did you get become so technically savvy? Who'd you run into on the road out there? <laughs> well, let's just say every now and then, you know, I got to hang my hat somewhere. And, uh, you know, let's just say the, the, the younger crowd, if you know what I mean, the younger crowd is a little more tech savvy than the older crowd. So... Every now and then, you know, I say, hey, you know, sweetheart, you know, what do you know about the interwebs? And next thing you know, I'm learning. So I got to learn how to do this. And I did it all through my phone. I don't have the equipment that you have, but I did it all through my iPhone. And 
it's a nice way to pass the time, and I really enjoy it. And we're one episode in the tank right now, and I'm going to try to do this every week. Every week. Now, I've known you for quite a long period of time, and almost in my entire life, and you have been a plethora of information about random songs that a lot of people haven't heard of. The only other person I know who's very into that weirdness and savvy is uh, South Boston Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Jeff, he's on a whole new plane. I mean, Jeff, Jeff likes some strong stuff. I like basic stuff that you could play for the whole family. Jeff, on the other hand, he goes really deep. He goes into those deep, dark chambers of the underground and the underbelly of music. Great taste, don't get me wrong. And he loves music with a hard driving edge. But most of the songs that you find on RB's JB are family-friendly and you could learn the words to. I can't wait to listen to the episode in full. Like I said, I didn't know anything about this until uh, Abigail told me about it. Like me, literally twenty minutes ago, you know, prepping for the show. She says Ricky bit me, sent me this link, and it's fantastic. And I had it right here on my phone. Uh, that struck my fancy right there. Frank Sinatra singing "Old Gr- Old Green Eyes" himself, Kermit the Frog song. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a beauty. I mean, like I said, these are songs I've collected over the years, and I feel like they're my songs because a lot of them, TC, i got to be honest with you, these songs are dying off. People don't play them anymore. I mean, you look at the new releases out there. It's a whole new genre. But I think if maybe, if just maybe, some of the younger people out there can hear one or two of these songs and find that their toes are doing a little tapping, maybe these songs will live a little bit more longer after I'm gone. So that's my ju- that's my job here with with uh, Ricky Bittman's jukebox is to bring life to songs that I just treasure and I, I just hold them so close to my heart, just like you know a preacher would hold the gospel. That's how I feel about these songs. And you're doing the right thing. You're putting it on the internet because once it's out on the internet, it's there forever. It is there forever, and that just brings some new life to me. Now, if you look at the uh, the picture on uh, Spotify, that is my actual jukebox that I have in storage. I thought I, I that- thought that looked familiar. Yeah, I had that back in the 70s. That was a beauty. I was in Vegas. Well, not in Vegas, but I won it in Vegas uh, at the Tangiers playing craps. And I was on display in my house in Pahrumpf. You know, I, I, you know, it's all coming back to me now. As a kid growing up, you know, I hung around with Bull over at the Damp Napkin uh, off the Vegas Strip. And we used to come oh, over to your house after he got off of work there and played all these tunes. Now, mind you, I was only like, what, maybe like 12 years old. And, and you uh, were younger. And that's where I first heard, and you correct me if I'm wrong, the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack on your jukebox. Yes, that was a beauty. That was a beauty. I had all, I, you know, what's very rare is instead of having the whole LP Every song was specially made for me by RSO Records. Each song was available to me as a 45. That's very rare, very now, collectible. Now, I remember RSO, that little, uh, what was that, like a little rhino or something as, as the yeah, little, little little uh, little red cow. Right. Was that what it was? A little red cow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like the, like the laughing cow cheese. I think the laughing cow cheese in the RSO cow. I could be wrong, but, you know, you know I, I'm not right about too many things. It's all dairy to me. <laughs> Which I can't have no, anymore. Because, yeah, I was just going to say, when's the last time you touched some dairy from Crown? You uh, get your milk from uh, from nuts now, don't you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, it's exactly where you get it from, the almonds. <laughs> I'm not talking about the uh, the Osmonds. I'm talking about the almonds. Exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm telling you. It's, this is what I love. This is what I love. How's your, how, how is your health, Ricky? I, like I said, I haven't seen you in quite a while. How you how you been doing? I probably put on the uh, the COVID ten or fifteen. I'm working to take them off now, but uh, you know, uh, you know, when we get depressed, we eat a little more, we drink a little more. But uh, you know, the doctor, I will say this, you know, I had a couple of little scares, but the doctor gave me a clean bill of health about three or four months ago, and uh, I see him regularly now, and uh, I always make it a point to be where I need to be when it's time for my physical. And I advise everybody up there. Yeah, especially when you get to be our age, go see your doctor. If something's bothering you, even if it's not, go get your numbers done. Go get your blood checked. It's the best thing you can do for yourself. Everybody should live a long, healthy life. And part of doing that is is seeing your doctor regularly. So I'm doing very good. Thank you, TC. Have you gotten your uh, vaccination yet? I'm not, I haven't yet, but I'm on the list. I mean, you know, uh, uh, let's just say I've gotten some uh, advice that uh, has come to me from on the other side of the clouds. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to get into too much information, but you know I'm privy, and I have definitely been uh, visited, let's just say that, and I have gotten some advice, and I was told to play these cards very close to my chest for now, and if there's anything I can reveal, I will certainly reveal it, and you'll be the first person to find out about it, but I was told to just go into a little bit of a holding pattern, and I will be advised as to when and where and what vaccine I can 
because let's just say I've been, I think my, my whole uh, DNA makeup has been affected by some of the people I've spent some time with. Uh, I, know? I, I know exactly what you're talking about. We're not just talking, we're not, we're not just talking about biscuit either. No, no. I've been in the room with some people who have uh, just, uh, let's say they've looked at this world from a different point of view than you and I. Whoa. <laughs> so you're talking about Colonel Bull Montana. <laughs> Let's, let's just, for now, we'll say that, yes. All right, yeah, well, but, uh, he, he's definitely from but, a different plane of existence. If, if everything they told me is true, uh, we're okay and we're going to pull out of this. But certain people should be very careful about the steps they take. And that's all I'll say. All right, you know what? We'll leave it at that because, you know, you are the gospel when it comes to things on the other side of the cloud. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you right now, and I'm, I'll say one more thing on that subject. Big reveal. Big reveal coming up very soon. Really? Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be standing by. Now, are, are you still doing anything over the shortwave radio? Uh, every now and then. You know, there's a few people out there that, uh, you know, I've, uh, that's uh, one of the reasons I was uh, inspired to do the podcast. But, you know, you, 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 I, it's, it's good because you talk to people, you know, all over the world. So every now and then you'll find me out there. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to get the old uh, tubes warmed up on mine because you gave me one as a Christmas gift when I was 13 years old. And I still have that, but all I need is to get the new tubes. Oh, yeah, fire it up. Yeah, what's that guy there, the, uh, the floor director Dave? He, if, if anyone can get a hold of tubes for that thing, it's that guy. Right, yeah, know. easily find it on eBay somewhere. But let's get back to what we're talking about at hand. Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater made its uh, debut in 2009. I can't believe it's been that long ago. And uh, like I said at the top of the program, Rastani Productions now has the broadcast rights to it. And that's going to be going up on our YouTube channel sometime in April when all the paperwork is completely done. And I think I'm, and I think I'm going to actually, uh, you know, I told you this off here. Um, we're going to be doing some virtual programs because of the COVID and Kill the Cure is happening. I really can't mm -hmm. have people into the studio, you know? Sure. So sure. I'm going to have you via uh, like a Zoom meeting of uh, of me in the studio and, and you talking about Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater in depth. We'll show some clips from it on the TV version of the show. Oh, that would be fantastic. But, I love it. But I just want to let the viewers out there know who have been contacting me ever since I broke the ice on the social media saying that Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater, the one though you love, the one that got the most reviews, raves about any Kung Fu program ever in the history of Kung Fu Theater. Uh, mm -hmm. Is coming back and it's coming to my YouTube channel sometime in April. And the big question I want to ask you, Ricky, is mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. we going to have future episodes? You know, here's my answer to that. We have to. Okay. I owe it, Great. To, the, I owe it to the world and I owe it to the fans. Now, for those of you who haven't seen Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater, shame on you. But you know what? It has been a long period of time. If you're familiar with Sven Gulli, it's kind of like on the vein of Sven Gulli, where he shows those crappy sci-fi movies, right? And you show, <laughs> I'm not going to say that they're crappy, but they're, you know, they're different kind of kung fu movies, and you give a no, little exactly. synopsis in between yeah, not, in between the clips. We're not showing uh, Into the Dragon, okay? You're not going to see any Bruce Lee movies on, 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 on my program. But, you know, you know, we, we can go back to the 70s, you know, you got kung fu of uh, eight drunkards you got seven steps of kung fu you got the ten brothers of shaolin you get master of death the eagles killer you know we could go on and on these movies are all you know sort of uh, you know public domain type films that are available that people don't really have much exposure to you know so what i'm doing is i'm bringing them back into the mainstream to a degree and what i do is rather than show the movie and just sort of interrupt it the only thing i show on ricky Bittman's kung fu theater is kung fu by that i mean the only thing you see are the fights. And what I do is I tell you the story between the fights. And then I rate each fight on a one to five fist of fury. That's pretty much the show in a nutshell. Unbelievable. You cut right to the chase. Yeah, because people tune in, you know, it's people late late nights, you know, a Saturday or Friday night, they're hanging out with their buddies or whoever, and, you know, they're, they're you know, doing a little of this or a little of that. They say, oh, look, at Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater. Well, I don't want to sit through the boring parts and the talk and everything, you know, and that, that you know, there's always that one little nebbish guy that, he speaks like this, you know, that's how he talks. We'll get you. Know, you know, you don't want to see, listen to all that. You want to see the fighting. So I bring you the Kung Fu. Ricky uh Bittman's Kung Fu Theater, right to the doorstep. Every fight in every movie will be highlighted and shown, and I tell you what happened between the fights. It's like when I used to watch those uh, <clears throat> uh, questionable movies uh, uh, back in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I used to fast forward through the dialogue, you know, because no one really, no one cared about the dialogue in those movies. Let's be honest, huh? How how did I not make that connection? This is how you know. See, this is why I need you because, I, like I always say, I'm not the sharpest knife in the 
McGraw, and that was that is the perfect comparison to what I do here. Right, you make you, you make forward to the good stuff. You make the Gonzo movies of Kung Fu. Exactly. Unbelievable out there, and I can't wait till we start airing this and start getting back in the studio and doing things. I know you were shooting Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater in the back of the Winnebago a long yes, time very, ago, yeah, but yeah. I, I hear that you're going to come here to the studio to actually shoot it. I think that would be that would be good. I mean, I, you you have all my raw footage. I mean, someday we should sit and go through it all because you know people uh, the blooper reel as they like to, to like they like to say uh, did did a lot of that on, on, on the earlier shows. Uh, I, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I have a newfound respect for you and all the crew there when I try to do this on my own. But I think maybe uh, I think Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater could benefit from a studio shoot. Now, here's the other question I want to ask you out there. A lot of fans are going to be one of looking to get to talk to you out there. So do you have any contact information? I don't, I don't know if you have any social media yet, but you do have an email for your Spotify. Why don't you give that out? Yes, the email is because this is the production company that handles uh, Ricky Bittman's jukebox. It's middle of the night podcast. Middle of the night podcast, all one long chain word, middle of the night podcast at gmail.com. And believe it or not, TC, I'm, uh, I, I've gotten the uh, air pump out and I'm pumping some life back into Ricky Bittman's Facebook page to begin with. And hopefully in the very near future, I can get back on the, uh, not back on, but onto that Twitter for the first time. You got to get on the Twitter. You got to get on the Twitter out there so you can hashtag Ricky Bittman Kung Fu Theater everywhere. Yeah, one, one one step of technology at a time. I see even even uh, that Mokes uh, McMurphy is on, on Twitter. I said, how the hell did he figure it out for crying out loud? Well, he, is he, is he, he, I, I, I used to love taking his money. Oh, my God. I, I mean, he... I could take his money with a car trick. Never mind uh, seven cars. That. Well, you know, he's been very busy with the COVID out there. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, I'm I haven't... Sure he, <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to hear my theories on that as far as my uh, my vaccination goes. Uh, he, he, he didn't believe that... Uh, he, he, he wasn't a firm believer of we not being alone. Let's just put it that way. Really? Oh, yeah. That's, no, well, that's no, well, he, he is a man of science, so. He is a man of science and medicine. And, uh, you know, like, like he used to always say, you know, he's seen us all naked. He's got nothing to hide. That is true. He, you, wait a minute. He's seen everybody? He's seen Abby naked? He's the doctor. I don't know if he's met her yet. <laughs> well, got to find those x-rays. Um, what's a different story for a different time? That's, that's the insurance, Paul. That's the insurance package you get when you're part of the After Hours with T.C. Rastani show, which is why I'm so healthy. It is true. Now, I got a, one big question I, I, I want to know is out there. The fans are going to love this. Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater making his triumphant return to our YouTube channel sometime in April. You're going to be on my show, the TV version of the show via Zoom. Merchandising. It's the big thing these days. Are you going to have a Ricky Bittman merch? I, I'm working on a Ricky Bittman's jukebox T-shirt. Really? You know? Yeah. Well, I figured I like the RB, uh, uh, the RBJB on the front, and maybe a picture of the jukebox on the back. I you love know? it. I love it. I, I I think we'll have to find some of uh, graphic designers that we know behind the scenes in the show to help you out with that. And I think you know it goes without saying that a Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater T-shirt would just fly off the shelves. Absolutely. No question about it. Because you do know I'm going to be opening up a merchandise store on tcrestani.com for all the intellectual properties that we represent. I didn't know that. Yeah. This is news to me. Well, maybe we can work something out. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry you're not in person here in the studio today like you were supposed to be. But you know what? You are a man of mystery and have a lot of things going and cooking in the fires. And I don't want to interrupt any of that. So I'm glad I got you on the phone sometime today for a little bit of uh, casual conversations with you. Sure, sure. And uh, you know, you're on the East Coast. You, can you can you divulge where on the East Coast? You said I'm not too far from me. But, you know, you know, everybody's not too far from me in Boston. I'll tell you right now. I am up in the the state that the motto is the way life should be. Do you know what state that is? Is that Maine? That is Maine. I'm on the coast of Maine. I'm up by Wells Beach right now, and I'm looking out at the Atlantic Ocean, and it is breathtaking. And you know, as you know, I love the East Coast, and this time of year is the best time of year to be on the East Coast. I mean, you know, a few weeks ago, forget it. I wouldn't want to be where I am right now, but I just love it up here, and I figured since I can't come to the studio and everything is closed down around your way, I figured I'd come up here and park by the beach for a few weeks, and I'm just sort of soaking in the salt there that I love so much. That is wonderful. That I mean, It's like a postcard looking out your window, I bet. Oh, you know what? I figure if I jump in the ocean now and just keep swimming, sooner or later I'll wind up in England. <laughs> or Ireland first. 
Oh, that's yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with Ireland, although the pubs aren't open. So who the hell wants to go there? At what? least in England, I can go set the royal family straight. And what, speaking of that, what's your take on the royal family? Are they racist or not? Oh boy, you know. Listen, how do these two, these these mockles and uh, and uh, ginger there, how do they take down the, the the British monarchy? I mean, can't they? You know, you know those guys. Don't they have those guys with those giant tall hats for a reason? Put them in a plane, send them over there, and kick some ass. You know, I, I, I don't think they're racist. I think they're being besmirched. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, we're we're in a very uh, we're, we're in very dangerous times. I'm going to say this with this this ease of cancel culture, and I I could be doing myself a disservice by even saying this, but I think we need to really just calm our asses down. Pardon my French, TC. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. You were permitted to say whatever you want on the after hours of TC Stanley the podcast. My take on it is, I, I don't even, you know, where did this girl come from? She came out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, she's telling the royal exactly. family what to do. Now, I I can't stand the royal family because who made them royalty? That's what I want to know. Right. Um, but they're a tourist attraction. But the thing I have, uh, I've been telling people off air, is uh, I think the same thing's going to, I think they're going to whack her like they whacked Diana. Oh, no. Well, you know what? Gee, I never thought of it, but you know what? If I were her, I'd, I'd put some eyes in the back of my head. And, and, you could and, be right. And you know how I think they're going to do it? 007 is going to do it. Well, other than that, but you know how, uh, what the scenario is going to be? What? She's got one in the oven right now. I think she's going to die in childbirth. Well, you heard it here first. Well, that would I will say this as much as I think she's a bitch on wheels. I would hate to see that happen, but if that happens then you know, you're going to have some explaining to do. Well, you, you do know that the royal family to stay young eat babies. Oh my god, here we go. Hey, well, you, this, this just this just thing took a hard left. You, well, have you <laughs> look, look, you know, you tell me to look things up all the time. I'm telling you to look things up. Look up a guy by the name of David Ike. He's like the Art Bell of England. Oh my lord. And uh, how did they come up with this one? This I I, I have to be honest with you, TC. This one I've never heard. Well, eat babies. Eat babies. It has the life force in it, you know? Well, and how does this come about? Where do they get these babies? I, I don't know. I'm just telling you what the man has told me over the, not over the phone, over the radio. I don't know him personally uh, yet, but. Uh, we'll he, get him on the show for crying out loud. I, I, think, I think that you should probably get in touch with him over the short wave as well. Um, What's but, his name? I like Ike. What was it again? Yeah, like yeah, did, Ike from the Waltons there. Yeah, David Ike. David Ike. All right. I-K-E? I, I-K-E, I believe. I-K-E. I, I-C-K-E. Not A I K or something. It's I don't I see, know. Look it up, David Ike, baby, and you'll find it. I, I guess if I just Google, oh, I don't. I don't even want to think if I what would happen if I Googled eating babies. But Jesus Christ, they're not going right, to. Well, they're not going to track you now because you're on the. You're always on the road. Well, that's true. That's true. They so can't, they can't find you. Me. Got a little yeah. Wi-Fi signal. You're just tapping off somebody's uh, Wi-Fi tower wherever you are, wherever you're oh. driving the Winnebago. So they're really not going to get you, which is the perfect way to travel, by the way. And if they could get me, they'd be saying. Who's this jackass downloading You Can't Roller Skate in the Buffalo Herd by Roger Miller? <laughs> that well, would be me. They, of course they're going to know who it is because it's Ricky Bittman's jukebox. That's right. That's right. I, I, we're running out of time here, Ricky. One more time. Give the fans out there the 411 on Ricky Bittman's jukebox. Okay. The 411 is you can find it currently on Spotify, soon to be found on uh, Apple Podcasts. And there's going to be some other platforms that will be available. We're in the works for that. But right now, uh, if you're on Spotify and you have a premium uh, subscription, you can hear the entire songs. If you don't have a paid subscription on Spotify, you can hear me and a little bit of each song. But try to get that paid subscription because Spotify is fantastic. Uh, and you can also find me on Facebook. I'm just Ricky Bittman. You'll know when you see me. And, 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 that's two, and that's two T's in Bittman. Two T's. That's right. B-I-T-T-M-A-N. Ricky Bittman. Two T's. That's right. Thank you for reminding me. And if you ever want to email me, you can always find me at middle of the night podcast at gmail.com. Until we see each other face to face over Zoom, I am honored and privileged to say you are my mentor, Ricky Bittman. Oh, and you bring a tear to my eye, TC. And you know, that's the highest compliment I can pay anyone, my friend. And just like the TV version, this is After Hours. And we what? We, we never close. Never. never.